Today is the solstice. It's the shortest day of the year. And whenever we reach a, another solstice or another equinox, there's one little bit from Dogen that comes to my mind and probably comes to a lot of people's minds. It's from Genjo Koan. We've talked about it before, but I feel like bringing it back. Here's a small bit. Dogen wrote, It is an unshakable teaching in Buddha's discourse that death does not turn into birth. Accordingly, death is understood as no death. Birth is an expression complete this moment. Death is an expression complete this moment. They are like winter and spring. You do not call winter the beginning of spring, nor summer the end of spring. I think about this, obviously, because what we tell ourselves, what I hear people say on the radio, what I tell my kids because they're excited about it, is that today is the beginning of winter. And they ask, it, it gets to be November and it's cold and it's snowing, and they say, is it winter yet? And I'm like, no, it's not winter yet, not technically. And then we finally get here, and it doesn't matter what it looks like today. It doesn't matter if something changed in the air. We look at the calendar and we say, now it's winter. Something happened. We understand in a way that something, we understand that something is false about that. It might have felt like winter a long time ago, as it did here. Or maybe it doesn't feel like winter yet. Maybe you live in a place where it never feels like winter. Maybe winter just feels like a construct. And yet there is this moment where we feel something is shifting. We understand today, for example, that, that today will be short and that today, tomorrow will be just a little bit longer. So we're reminded of the idea of the passage of time. This feeling that we're moving forward, this, moving that thing, this feeling that things are changing and it also, because it's the winter solstice, is the time when everyone is doing their top 10 for the year. Everyone is looking backward and assessing everything that happened since the last time. So we take stock. It's a little way station between then and what's coming. It's this rare moment when we notice something about now. In a, in a slightly bigger way. Dogen says, birth is an expression complete this moment. Death is an expression complete this moment. And this comes after a longer conversation about how we shouldn't understand that one is moving into the other. Or that one is incomplete without the other. Everything is just as it is. And by extension that winter is winter and spring is spring. Summer is summer. It all sounds very heady in a way. But it's practical. And one way to think about it because we live in the moment that we do, I think is in terms of how we think about the past. One of the things that I hear, and that maybe you hear, or that maybe you say, or maybe you think, is that one day we'll go back to normal. We'll go back. Someone was talking with me just the other day, his life has just been turned upside down by all sorts of circumstances. But they're temporary and he understands that and he was saying, well, this is how it is right now, but I know eventually I'll go back to how things were. 
And what we talked about then, what I tell myself all the time, because I need to hear it, is that no, we won't go back. We don't. We never move backward in time. We never move back to how things were. We never get to reach backward into that closet and pull something into now. Not in the way we would like to. Things are as they are here. And to a certain extent, the degree to which we're looking at how things were is the degree to which we can't see how things are. It's a basic acceptance problem. It's a useful thought exercise, I think, to consider how you view time in your mind. And, and we've talked about this a few times. Some people see it as a straight line. Some people imagine it as a kind of loop. I do. I always have since I was a child. It's I'm here and there's a kind of loop of time. And because I'm positioned in winter, I see spring, I see summer, I see fall and I see me. And when it's spring, everything will move and I'll be in spring. This is how I've always conceived of it, for as long as I've conceived of it. But everybody has something a little bit different. And then within that construct, there's more. Do you imagine, for example, that winter is a kind of room that you walk through until you get to the door that is spring. Some do. Maybe you imagine like this, this thing in my head that it's something turning around you and you're watching from the inside. Or maybe it's like a train and you're just riding winter all the way to spring. Whatever it is, when Dogen talks about things being complete this moment, whether it's death or birth or spring or summer, he's pushing back a little bit on whatever that idea is. When Dogen talks about time, and you, you can agree with him or disagree with him, but it's useful. When Dogen talks about time, he's trying to pull away the idea that we inhabit it. That spring is a big thing that we walk through, that we explore. Spring is just a measurement of time. It's a unit of time. And then Dogen flips and he says, you're a unit of time. Because nothing about you is distinct from time. Nothing about you is on the outside looking in. You might imagine that you can look forward and then you can turn around and look back as if time is a space where you can move freely. But your time, and so on a graph that measures time, the point where you put right now and the point where they put you is the same point. Because there can't be two separate times. You're not distinct from anything that's happening right now. Because we're all of now. And now is of us.
And then this goes further and it includes past and it includes future. You know, there's no idea of time travel in Buddhism. I've never encountered it in any story. There's no notion, there's notions about other worlds. There's, there's notions of, of different kinds of beings, of all sorts of supernatural experiences. I've never encountered anything, and maybe someone will see this and, and tell me I'm wrong. I've never encountered any story about going to the future or going to the past. But it makes sense. Because from a, a Buddhist point of view, the past and the future have already come to us. They're here. Now. The past fully informs everything that we're experiencing now. Everything led to this. Everything you touch, everything you smell, everything you think, everything you wonder about comes from seeds of the past. And everything you're going to think, everything you're going to wonder, everything you're going to regret, everything you're going to touch, everything that's going to happen, it's all starting now. It's here. And so while we aren't free to go back to the thing we want, we're free in a much deeper sense. We're free of the past not because we can wash it away, not because we can turn away, but because we have no choice about carrying it with us. It's just always there. We can notice it, we can embrace it, we can honor it. We can't change it. And we can't take some part of it that we want. It's just all of this. This is the past. And we're free in that when we look to the future, we understand. We don't have to wait for it. Whatever music is going to play, it's starting right now. When we feel that, when we hear that, it changes the way that we move. Now we're not anticipating, now we're not waiting. Now we're not putting anything off. It's fully in motion and it has, it has always been in motion. just as we have been. So here we find ourselves at this moment, this cusp, maybe thinking about the last year, or for many of us thinking of the last couple of years, because it can feel like a, a set. And most likely because of how things are today, all around the world, we're thinking about next year. What will it be like next year? Will we get out of this? Will we get back to something? Will we break into something better? Will it get worse? I think it's good that we have these days when we look three-dimensionally. But the practice, the invitation, 
as we do that, is to slow down, maybe even to close our eyes, and to consider, really consider, this idea that time is not something we're in. It's not something we're moving through. It's certainly not something we rearrange. Time is simply what's happening right now and all that right now contains. And you are right now. You contain all of it. There's nothing you need from back there. And there's nothing you need to wait for over there. You're in the only place you can be, in the only time you can be. And that's where I'll stop.